Are you dreaming of becoming a pilot but concerned about the high cost of flight training? Well fear not, because in this video we're going to show you how to finance your pilot training. Whether you're a Canadian citizen or permanent resident, there are various financial aid options available to help you achieve your goal of flying. We'll explore government student loans, aviation scholarships, bursaries and lines of credit specifically designed for flight training. So by the end of this video you'll have a better understanding of how to fund your pilot training and take the first step towards a rewarding aviation career. Welcome back to Aviator Inspirations, my name is Yaro and I help take the mystery out of the aviation industry. In this video I'm going to give you my best strategies, which most of them I used myself to pay for my own flight training. Also stick around to the end where I'll give you some cost saving tips. Let's dive in. The first strategy to pay for flight training, which will also result in minimum debt, is to save work and then train in consolidated chunks. This is a strategy many aspiring pilots use to fund their flight training, including myself. This approach involves working and saving money for a period of time before undertaking flight training in concentrated blocks of time, such as a few months of full-time training. While this method can be effective in financing pilot training, it also has its pros and cons. The first pro is financial flexibility. This approach allows you to work and save money before committing to a costly flight training program. It provides financial flexibility and can help reduce the financial burden of loans or other forms of financing. For example, if you are undertaking your private pilot license, save a minimum of $13,000 before starting your training. This leads to the second pro and that's greater focus. By consolidating training into a few months of concentrated effort, you can maintain a higher level of focus and commitment, leading to more efficient training. This will lead to the third pro, and that's potential cost savings. Some flight schools even offer discount rates for consolidated training, which can help reduce the overall cost. The first con of this approach is delayed training. Working and saving before training can lead to a delay in starting the training which can be frustrating for those eager to get going. The second con is financial uncertainty. Saving money for training can be challenging and unexpected financial emergencies may arise, making it difficult to stay on track with the savings plan. And the third con is time commitment. Consolidating training into a few months requires a significant time commitment and may be difficult for those with other obligations such as work or family. Working, saving and then training is how I personally paid for my private pilot's license, but it took me a whole year to do so. This strategy has its drawbacks, but you can use this approach in combination with the next way to finance your flight training. The second way is student loans. Student loans are a popular way for aspiring pilots to finance their flight training and can be a great option for those who don't have the financial means to pay for flight training up front. The first pro is that it's easy access. Student loans are readily available to Canadian citizens and permanent residents and can be obtained through government programs or private lenders. Check out the links for all the options in the description. The second pro is deferred payment. Many student loans offer deferred payment options, which allows the borrower to delay making payments until after graduation or when they start earning a certain income. And the third pro is building credit. Successfully repaying a student loan can help establish a positive credit history and improve credit scores, which can be beneficial in the long run. There are of course certain cons, the first one being interest. Student loans accrue interest from the moment they are dispersed, which means the borrower may end up paying more over time than they initially borrowed. This of course can be offset with the benefit of getting into the aviation industry faster and taking advantage of the current pilot shortage. The second con is the debt burden. Borrowing large sums of money for flight training can lead to a significant debt burden, which can take years to pay off and limit financial flexibility. 
This coupled with the low entry level pilot pay can cause significant financial stress for young pilots. Especially if you undertake too much debt, you might only have enough income to cover the interest portion and never enough money to pay off the principal. This is why I caution young pilots on taking on too much financial debt as paying it off can be impossible. And the third con is qualification requirements. Student loans may have strict eligibility requirements including credit score, income and academic criteria which may disqualify some individuals from receiving loans. Pilot loans are especially difficult to get as only certain flight schools and pilot programs qualify. This is why developing your financial strategy is important before deciding on a flight school and beginning your training. I use the strategy to pay for my multi IFR rating, which is quite costly and it took me many years to pay off. So as with any type of loan, it's essential to have a plan for repayment and to only borrow what is necessary to avoid taking on excessive amount of debt. Some flight schools are now also providing financial aid to their students, so when doing your research, ask for those options. Bank loans are the third option for aspiring pilots to finance their flight training. While bank loans can provide more flexible financing options than student loans, they also have their pros and cons. The first pro is the flexible repayment terms. Bank loans typically offer more flexible repayment terms than student loans, which can also allow borrowers to tailor their repayment plans to fit their financial situation. The second pro is competitive interest rates. Depending on the borrower's credit score and other factors, bank loans may offer lower interest rates than other forms of financing, which can help reduce the overall cost of flight training. And the third pro is no restriction of the funds. Unlike student loans, bank loans do not have restrictions on the use of the funds, which means borrowers can use the loans to cover any type of flight training and related expenses. For example, student loans do not cover your private pilot license. Now the first con for taking on a bank loan is qualification requirements. Bank loans often require a good credit score, stable income and other criteria which can disqualify some borrowers from receiving loans or result in higher interest rates. The second con is collateral requirements. Depending on the loan amount, banks may require collateral to secure the loan which can put assets at risk if the borrower is unable to make repayment. And the third con similar to student loans is the high debt burden. In summary, bank loans can be a viable option for financing pilot training especially if you don't qualify for a student loan but it's important to carefully consider the pros and cons before making that decision. Borrowers should also shop around for the best interest rates and repayment terms and have a plan in place for repayment to avoid taking on an excessive amount of debt. Scholarships and bursaries is the fourth way to pay for your flight training. These are an excellent option for aspiring pilots who are looking for alternative ways to finance their flight training. These type of funding sources are typically offered by aviation organizations, flight schools and other institutions and can be awarded based on a variety of criteria such as academic achievement, financial need or other accomplishments. The biggest pro is that there is no repayment required. Unlike loans, scholarships and bursaries do not need to be repaid which can significantly reduce the financial burden. The second pro is rewarding accomplishments. Scholarships and bursaries can be awarded based on a variety of accomplishments such as academic achievement or community involvement, which can provide a sense of pride and recognition for aspiring pilots. This includes helping more women get into aviation. Elevate Aviation is a not-for-profit organization founded in Edmonton, Alberta that provides a platform for women and underrepresented groups to thrive and succeed through careers in aviation. And the third pro is additional benefits. Some scholarships and bursaries may come with additional benefits such as mentorship programs, networking opportunities, or access to industry events. Networking is huge in aviation, so even if you don't get a scholarship awarded, it can still open doors for you in the future. 
Now the first con is that scholarships and bursaries can be highly competitive, with many applicants competing for a limited number of awards. I mean, who doesn't love free money? The second con is limited availability. Scholarships and bursaries may only be available during certain times of the year or for specific training programs, which can limit the option for aspiring pilots. The third con is additional requirements. Scholarships and bursaries may come with additional requirements such as maintaining a certain GPA or fulfilling community service obligations, which can add additional stress and time commitments to your schedule. So scholarships and bursaries can be a great way for aspiring pilots to finance their flight training without taking on debt, but it shouldn't be your primary source of financial aid. The scholarships are small amounts of money and they do help, but you will still need to use strategy 1-3 to three to pay for the major bulk of your training. And my final recommendation to pay for flight training are private loans. These loans are typically offered by private lenders and may have more flexible terms than traditional bank loans, but they also come with their own set of risks. While private loans may offer more flexible terms than traditional bank loans, such as longer repayment periods, they usually come with higher interest rates than other types of financing, which can increase the overall cost of training. Another type of private loan is through family members. Parents or family members might have access to better capital with more favorable interest rates that they can lend to you. Or better yet, if they have cash sitting around, you can negotiate very flexible and low interest terms. The key to borrowing money from family is establishing clear terms of the loan so that no confusion of repayment arises in the future and doesn't cause hardship on your relationships. So use the strategy cautiously, but it can be the best way to avoid banks and government loans. Lastly, as promised, here are my tips on how to save money during your flight training. The first tip I already mentioned, and that's flying in bulk and consolidating your training. When I was a flight instructor, this is consistently the number one mistake my students made. Those that flew four to five days a week progressed so much quicker than those that flew one to two days per week. Flight training is all about repetition and practice, so the more often you practice and study, the faster you'll progress. Second tip is listen to liveatc.net to get familiar with radio work. If you can practice your radio calls on the ground, you will save so much time in the airplane. Just think about it, anytime you're sitting there with the engine running, it's costing you money. So the more prepared you are for your lesson, the more time and money you will save. And the third tip is to train on a cheaper aircraft like a Cessna 150. Flight schools that are offering brand new Cessna 172 with G1000 cockpits are completely unnecessary and result in higher training costs. I'm still under the old school philosophy where it's best to learn on steam gauges which is a nickname for mechanical gauges versus digital ones, and then move on to the sophistication and automation later. This can save you thousands of dollars in training costs, so take that into account when comparing flight school costs. So with these financing tools at your fingertips, you can unlock the power of flight and soar past that 100,000 training cost barrier. I hope you found this video helpful and I would love to hear your stories of how you managed to pay for your flight training. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.